reviews for his role in Angels in America, James McArdle. James, where are you from? I'm from Glasgow in Scotland. And yet you're doing a perfect American accent. Oh, that was nice of you to say. I mean, I, honestly, I, I think if people don't believe it, they should get their money back. Really. But it's, um, you know, I felt a lot of pressure coming over here. I did this in London, but um, I knew it was a slight difference from doing it in London and then coming to New York playing this like iconic New York Jewish character where I knew so much of the audience would, would be Jewish and from New York. and. Um, so it wasn't something I took lightly, you know, I knew I had to get it accurate, so it's been a lot of work, but it's been rewarding. It's very hard to stay positive in this world and playing the role that you're playing. What do you do to stay positive? Well, I actually find it really hopeful, the play, you know, by the end. I, I know it's slightly depressing, but when the play was written versus what's happened now, but, you know, we've got to just... We've got to keep pushing forward for change, you know, that's, and I don't think there's ever going to be this sort of utopia where we find this political bliss where everyone is happy. It's going to be a constant battle, you know, and so you have to sort of be prepared to, to battle, you know. And where did you come from to, to become your character in Angels? Well, actually, you know, I've said this a lot, it was so easy because the way Tony writes is so musical, it was, um, when I read it, I could just hear the character so so vividly, you know, it's 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 written like music. I could I could hear the tone of his voice and and um, the speed of thought is is written like that, you know. So it's, it was it's a total joy to play a character like this, a character that thinks so fast and interrupts himself and interrupts everyone else, and you know, it's it's good fun. And what's next for you? I have this uh, Mary Queen of Scots film coming out with Sir Sharon and Margot Robbie. It comes out December the seventh, and then. I'm doing another play. I think maybe it's coming to New York, but I can't. I don't think I can say what the play is yet. But um, it's starting in London, and I think it's coming back here next year. Fabulous! Yeah. So that'd be great. If you go to Once on This Island, you will not miss Kanita Miller, who's giving a phenomenal performance. Kanita. Hi. Hi. What do you do to stay positive in this world? Oh, well it doesn't it doesn't take much especially doing this show cuz it's such a show about the remembrance of resilience as a human being and it's about love. It's about choosing love and how can that not put you in a good mood, you know? Even just the thought of it. So, and the the music is infectious. The cast, my family is infectious and um and I'm in love with them. So, it's not hard to be in a good mood. <laughs> now, where did you come from to become your character? Um, actually, my character is based a lot on my own my, my own mother. She did some missionary work in Haiti. She worked with the children. She worked on rebuilding, a, helping rebuild a school. And our show is about rebuilding a community. So, um, it, uh, that's that's kind of the impetus of where my character came from. And I love my mama. So, <laughs> can we see you anywhere else now besides doing Once on This Island? Um, well, actually, standing right next to me is my husband, who was also nominated for a, a different show um, but we do a lot of work together um, and hopefully we'll be having a, a residency or two popping up here and there we just did one at the Park Avenue Armory so so hopefully you'll see some original work from us as well Congratulations. Thank I'm Justin Hicks and I'm nominated as the composer for Malima's Tale now that soundtrack and those sounds were amazing how did you come up with all of that well it's kind of a mixed bag of tricks so to speak uh, we had an excellent sound designer and really Joe Joe Bonnie the director set up a room that really offered a lot of collaboration so I had my crazy ideas and she had her crazy ideas and we kind of just put them together but materially the sounds are a lot of things that aren't elephants at all so that's kind of a fun thing that I was able to do I was actually amazed and my mouth was open I was I thought it was so amazing it's very hard to stay positive in this world right now. What do you do to stay positive? Oh, wow. You know what? Doing this work keeps me positive. It's something that I hold on to. It, it's actually a pleasure and a very positive um, thing. It's a positive thing to be able to make work, to be able to make art, to be able to collaborate with people at the top of their game, to be able to you know, interact with really amazing actors. Um, to have a wife who's also an amazing artist is a really 
a beautiful thing too. So we kind of encourage each other, but I think really it's just um, the pleasure of being in the position to tell stories and to talk about tough issues. Uh, it's it's kind of our responsibility, but we also have uh, the ability to make beauty out of these things. So that's that's the most pleasurable part about being a composer, I think. And what's next for you? Um, well, I'm going to go out to LA and do some recording and work with some friends of mine and make a record and I'll be doing some more theater things. You know, I'm kind of one in, one foot in, one foot out of theater, but I do have some uh, some other exciting work coming up soon. Yeah, next year. We look forward to it. Thank you. Hi. Good. How are you? State your name and what you're nominated for. Hi, I'm Dane Laffrey. I'm nominated for Best Set Design of a Musical for Once on this Island. What drives you in a positive way to do what you do? Um, gosh, that's kind of a tough question. What drives me to do what I do in a positive way? I guess I just... You know what I say to kids who like are like, you know, do what should I do? You know, should I work in the theater? What's this business like? And I say, like, if you need to do it, then you need to do it. And I think, uh, you know, for better or for worse, I need to do it. And that is always the thing that drives me is that I just, I don't know how to function in the world without making stories like this. What story would you most like to make? Oh, gosh. Um... That's an incredibly tough question to answer. I feel like what I would like all of my work to do is to is to uh, be in conversation with with the world as it is today, and to be in conversation with. Uh, you know, the world of, of fine art, of fashion, of architecture, of, of, of fine design, think, you know, that in a way that, like, theater isn't always. I like the idea that we can, like, elevate what we all do as a community and be in greater conversation with the world of art. Thank you.